Hey everyone, I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch, and in this episode of CUDA Crash Course, we're going to be moving past our previous examples with 1D convolution and finally moving on to the 2D version. Now, we're going to skip uh, a lot of the boilerplate stuff that we went over in the 1D version, uh, mainly because you know, we've kind of you know, talked that to death, uh, going over the four examples being the uh, 1D naive version, the constant memory version, and then the uh, tile version and the cache version. So because we've already gone over 1D convolution so much, we'll you know, skip a lot of that for the 2D version. Now in the 2D version, we'll go ahead and open up the code. Let's see what's different. So the main operation for 2D convolution is very similar to 1D convolution. The only difference being in 1D convolution, we would have a, a one-dimensional mask and a one-dimensional data array, and we'd sweep the one-dimensional mask over the one-dimensional data array. Now we're going to be talking about a two-dimensional mask. So it'll be a small matrix that is our convolutional mask. And then we'll be sweeping that matrix now over the larger uh, data matrix now. So instead of a data array, it's a data matrix. So you know, what, are the, what are the things we have to take care of now that we've got you know, two dimensions instead of one? Well, it means that instead of uh, having to take, you know, take care of at all the edges, uh, making sure that we don't run off in one dimension like we did in the, uh, the simple case, the 1D case, now we have to make sure both the rows and the columns uh, are accessing uh, values that are valid, right? The values that exist within the data matrix. Uh, the other thing we have to do is now, as far as going over our mask, not only do we have to have a single loop that just goes over all the values in the mask, we need to have a, uh, a, a pair of nested for loops that goes over all the rows and then all the, uh, all the columns. So, uh, so that's really the only changes we need. So you know, starting out, we're going to keep the same size of mask. So it's going to be uh, a dimension of seven, but instead of being, you know, uh, only a row, a single row of seven entries, now it's going to be a seven by seven small matrix. And then we'll go ahead and also define what the mask offset is. And so we can calculate this with, again, just the mask dimension divided by two. Uh, and here we've got our constant uh, memory. So again, remember, we have to allocate enough space for the entire matrix. Uh, for the mask, and so if we go down to the uh, go down to the main function, we see that most of this uh, is exactly the same. So we'll go ahead and do convolution on a uh, 1k element by 1k element uh, data matrix. So we'll allocate some space for it. We'll allocate the same size matrix as we have result. We'll initialize the matrix with just some random values. Then we'll go ahead and initialize uh, the mask on the host side. Uh, using the same init matrix, because remember, uh, we've got uh, both the data and the uh, mask are both matrices just of different sizes. And then we'll allocate some space on the GPU, copy it over with CUDA mem copy, and because we have constant memory and we've got that uh, symbol mask at the very top of the program, remember we've got, uh, let's see where it is. So at the very top of the program, we've got this uh, constant int mask up here. So we'll go ahead and mem copy the symbol there, the symbol being mask. Okay, so let's get rid of that. Okay, so uh, the only thing we have left to do is start thinking about you know, what do we want as the dimensions of our grid now. So instead of having you know a 1D line of thread blocks, we're now going to have a, a grid of thread blocks. So in this case, we'll just make 16 by 16 thread blocks. So each thread block will have a total of 256 threads, meaning it will calculate 256 finals in that um, result matrix. And then we'll go ahead and calculate the total number of blocks being in, and then we'll pad it with threads minus one divided by threads. This just makes sure if we don't get a multiple of, uh, of 16 uh, as the number of elements in our matrix, uh, this just makes sure that we pad the thread blocks so we're accessing enough values. But in this case, uh, it doesn't really matter because uh, 1024 is divisible by 16. Then we'll pack these into uh, these dim three data types for our launch arguments, and we'll go ahead and launch the kernel, passing it uh, a pointer to the device allocated matrix and result matrix, and then the dimensions of the matrix as a whole, which is just in. We'll copy the data back, we'll verify the result. So we'll talk about the verification uh, and a neat, you know, an interesting thing that we really haven't seen before uh, in terms of the uh, verification as compared with the uh, GPU code. So if we go to the very top where we've got the actual kernel itself, so here's our convolution 2D kernel. So the first thing we need to do, similar to something like matrix multiplication, because no longer do we have this single big long line of threads, we actually have a grid. 
because we have a grid, each thread we've got to index as you know a row column pair. So we'll go ahead and calculate the rows and the column indices. Now we'll go ahead ahead of time and figure out where you know each element needs to begin its computation. So instead of just having you know a start point like we had in the simple uh, 1D case, now we have a start row point and a start column point because remember uh, we're overlaying a matrix now, so it's in two dimensions. And so this will just be whatever the row we are minus uh, uh, minus whatever the mask offset is, which is how much uh, from the center element of the uh, from the convolutional mask to the edges. Right, that's what mask offset ends up being. So it's mask dim divided by two. Right, and in this case, we're assuming that mask dim is an odd number, so that uh, this will give us uh, the amount of elements that are on either side of that center number. So in this case, uh, because we have uh, a mask dim of seven, this will be seven divided by two, which uh, it'll only divide evenly three times. The answer is really 3.5, but that'll get rounded down to just three. So it'll be three elements on either side of a center element. So seven total elements in each dimension. Okay, so back over here. Uh, and so you can think of uh, the start R and start uh, C uh, pair as being the upper left corner of the uh, the upper left corner of where we're doing our computation, right? And then basically what we'll do is we'll sweep over all of those rows starting at the upper left corner until we get to the very last iteration that will end us at the very bottom right corner. Okay, so we'll have an, again. Just like with the other version, we'll have a temp value that we'll use to accumulate our result. And then we'll have our doubly nested for loop. So you know, for our doubly nested for loop, it's actually pretty simple. All we need to do is iterate over both the x and the y dimension. So we need to go over every single row, and we need to go over every single column. And then, um, and this is every single row and every single column of the actual mask itself. Remember, we already have a, a we already know based upon uh, row and column where we're trying to access inside of our um, our big matrix that's in memory. And we use start R and start C to really find out where in that global access in memory we're accessing. And then we need two if statements, right? And so this could be condensed into a single uh, if statement, but just to you know kind of separate things out and make it a little cleaner to read, I separate it into two. So like I said earlier, we need to check to see if we're hanging off the rows, and we also need to check to see if we're hanging off the columns. So in this case, the first one, we'll go ahead and see if we're uh, hanging off the rows, and we'll do that by checking start R uh, plus I, and then I being um, iterating over the rows of uh, our mask. And then we'll do, um, in the second if statement, we'll compare uh, start C, which is the columns, plus J, so is the column hanging off the matrix. And uh, if it's either, we need to make sure that it's greater than or equal to zero, so we can't have a negative index for a column or a row. And likewise, for the row and column, we need to make sure it's less than N, so it's not hanging off uh, uh, the right side, uh, or it's above the matrix. So these are the two conditions that we have to check. And then otherwise, we'll go ahead and just accumulate a result. And to this, we'll just add to temp. Uh, we'll access uh, from uh, the matrix and the mask. We'll address, uh, address from the matrix will be the start row plus i, i being what row we're on now as we go over all of the, um, all the rows in the convolutional mask times n. So that will just help us get us down to which row. And then we'll access start c plus j, and this will just give us uh, whatever the column's going to be. Then likewise, we'll multiply this by mask, and mask we can just automatically uh, access using i and j. Uh, because remember, this start r and start c, this is accessing uh, you know, based upon row and column, which you know, are based on you know, the, the big 1024 by 1024 matrix that we have in global memory. When we're talking about accessing mask, we really just have that small seven by seven matrix in constant memory. So we just need I and J. Okay, so uh, other than that, this will just go ahead and accumulate everything that's valid, valid being everything that's still in the matrix. Uh, otherwise, it'll just skip over that computation because it would be z a zero either way. And then we'll write back the results into the correct row column position at the very end. Now, uh, 
what I said earlier that you know was a little bit interesting was dealing with uh, the CPU verification. And this is one example where a lot of times GPU code is much you know, harder to comprehend than CPU code. And a lot of it deals with the, the nature of GPU applications. So GPU applications are very spatial in nature. And what I mean by that is you've got some data and generally the way that you program is that you have to kind of visualize the threads that you're gonna launch. So your grid of threads overlaid on the data. Now, because we end up having, you know, a 2D matrix that we're sweeping over um, another 2D matrix on in our actual verify result on the CPU, this winds up being a quadruply nested for loop, right? So just kind of going over what everything does, we have to iterate over every single row and then for every single column. So for every single element in the final matrix, we have to go over uh, the entire mask in all of its rows and columns, which is what these uh, inner two for loops are for, the ones with um, the variables K and L. Now, uh, the, the reason why we're able to avoid this in the GPU version is because this two-dimensional nature of the uh, accessing you know, which row and which column of the global matrix, this is taken care of us based upon the fact that we have 2D thread blocks and a 2D array of grids. So that's essentially replaced by the fact that um, our definition of our launch parameters for our thread blocks and our grid, and it's basic, and you know it's essentially replaced just with this simple row column uh, calculation based upon block IDX, block DIMX, uh, because we don't need to loop over anything. We've basically unrolled those loops into just being individual computational things that we've grouped together in thread blocks, and they'll just kind of execute on their own. So we only need to go over uh, the mask uh, itself inside of the GPU version. But for the CPU version, because it's serial, we need this quadruply nested for loop, which looks kind of silly. Uh, then again, we'll have the same kind of range checks. So we have to make sure that our offset R and offset C, offset R being for the rows and offset C for the columns, we need to make sure likewise that it's not a negative index and we need to make sure it's less than the, uh, uh, you know, it, it's not going off the side or above the matrix or to the right of the matrix. So we need to make sure that it's valid so we don't get like a seg fault. Uh, otherwise we just, you know, aggregate, uh, we, you know, get the entire result and we accumulate it in temp. And then we'll just have an assert to check to see if it fails. But that's really it for 2D convolution. As we can kind of see, uh, basically our single, our single for loop turns into a nested for loop, our uh, matrix, or our, our vector mask turns into now, or our mask that's an array turns into a mask that's a matrix now. Uh, but other than that, the you know the steps are pretty much exactly the same. Now this is something that we could also optimize more by uh, you know tiling this just like we did with the um, the version that was one dimensional. But we might leave that for another time. So now we'll go ahead and just test out test out the functionality. So we'll just do nvcc o convolution convolution.cu, and we'll go ahead and run the program. Right, and it says completed successfully. So we didn't hit that a certain die. Uh, you, know, you know, our CPU version matched what we got as a result from the GPU version. Uh, we can also profile this, although we have nothing really to compare it to because we only have a single version. But we can see that. Um, convolution 2D took about 1.1 1 .1, uh, milliseconds. It's a little bit longer than um, a one way of the memory copy time from the device to host. So um, yeah, so that, that's gonna be the basics of you know convolution uh, in two dimensions. Uh, as always, all the code is available at github.com slash coffee before arch. So feel free to check it out here. So we've got CUDA programming. Uh, that's where all of this code is going to be posted, right? And so we've got you know, all of our other videos on matrix multiplication. So if you if you have some of this 2D indexing uh, and thinking about this kind of spatially is a little bit confusing, I suggest taking a look at the matrix multiplication version. You know, especially something like uh, the tiled matrix multiplication version here is where indexing becomes something that you really have to get good at visualizing. Uh, likewise, we've got an optimization of sum reduction, and here's our convolution section. So uh, if we go up here to convolution, and we go to 2D constant memory, 
here's our example, right? So feel free to take a look at this, download it, and play around with it. Uh, if you're interested in you know, seeing an optimized version of 2D Constant Memory, feel free to let me know. Otherwise, because we've already done four uh, videos on 1D you know, convolution, and we've done a video now on 2D convolution, we'll probably just you know, move on and uh, you know, continue with other algorithms, like you know, doing a searching algorithm or sorting algorithm or some kind of you know, in-body simulation. But yeah, that's going to be it for today. As always, I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch, and I hope you have a nice day.